BBC News. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by Daniel Swain, who is a climate scientist at UCLA's Institute of Environment and Sustainability. Uh, Daniel, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, are you surprised by the sheer scale of what we're seeing in the UK and in parts of Europe? Well, you know, I would say that it is certainly shocking to see it happen in the real world. But if, from a physical science perspective, it is unfortunately not all that surprising, given what we know about how climate change is dramatically increasing the likelihood and severity of uh, high magnitude or even unprecedented heat events around the world. Well, OK, but even though we're all seeing the effects of climate change, Polls show that, particularly here in the U.S., climate change is not a priority for the vast majority of voters. Why do you think that is? Well, I think for, for a long time, for decades really, there had been a perception that climate change were, it was essentially a problem for future generations, was a future tense kind of problem that we would eventually figure out before it became uh, too disruptive uh, in society. And I think what we're coming up against this decade is the reality that climate change uh, is a here and now problem. The projected increases in certain kinds of extreme events like extreme heat waves that we're seeing all around the world, uh, not just this year, but, but often in recent years as well, um, as well as other sorts of extremes like increasing extreme downpours uh, and wildfires in many regions. Uh, these are things that people are starting to experience today. These are no longer just predictions about the future, but they are uh, present day reality. And so I think uh, maybe there's a bit of a disconnect between some of the predictions that we've been hearing about for so many years and the fact that this is now a, an on the ground reality for many people. But as we know, Congress has failed to enact any climate change legislation. Um, in the absence of anything happening at a federal level, can the states do enough to, to, to mitigate this? Well, in the United States, uh, individual states have historically been engines of innovation when it comes to climate policy, um, partly because they, they are not so constrained by how slowly, unfortunately, the federal government uh, has moved on this and other issues recently. So I, I am optimistic that, that states um, like California, for example, will continue to be climate leaders. But I think even there, I think we're, we're coming up um, against the reality that we really need to accelerate this process at a time when global climate commitments are sort of falling by the wayside. We're not meeting the targets that we had set out to meet as recently um, as during the Paris uh, Accords just uh, a few years ago. So, you know, we, we really need to pick up the pace if we're going to slow and eventually halt uh, global warming. We really need to make uh, tremendous and rapid progress on reducing emissions and eventually bringing them to zero as soon as possible. But it, it, but it doesn't seem to be happening, does it? I mean, in, in terms of, of public apathy, have we reached the point where we are actually going to have to adapt and live with this rather than try to stop it? Well, it's not really an either-or proposition between uh, mitigating climate change and reducing the amount of warming and adapting to the changes we know are occurring because, of course, the climate change is already happening and this is something that we do have to adapt to, certainly. Um, so we need to be doing both as much as possible. It's, it's not really something we can pick and choose between. But I do think that brings up the interesting issue of whether or not the public policy uh, on, on the climate front in the United States is diverging from public opinion. And a majority of Americans correctly recognize that climate change is real. Um, and yet our, our national policies still don't seem to reflect that reality uh, of opinion among the American public and the consensus among scientists. And so that disconnect, I think, is, is, is really quite problematic in this present moment. Daniel Swain, thank you very much indeed for joining me.